Welcome to the Mobile Application Framework YouTube channel. My name is Frank Nymphius and I'm from the Oracle Application Development Tools and Mobility Tools product management team. In this episode, I will talk about Pojo data controls as a special use case of a local data control that you can create in MAF. First of all, if you look at the Pojo data control, and I actually refer to this quite a lot in the episodes that I recorded, because obviously it has some special power with it. And if you look at this, it's appearing as the ultimate silver bullet in architecture for building powerful and flexible data models in math. And the reason is because the Pojo data control can talk to almost any data service that you have available. It could call out through a SOAP service to a remote SOAP service. It can talk to a REST service. It could talk to local resources be it the device data control, it can talk to the application feature data control, it can talk to SQLite. So it's a kind of a dispatcher to everything and that really makes it powerful. And there are some use cases where you want to use the Pojo data control for. For example, to visualize data or pull data out of the SQLite database and show it on the user interface in a declarative manner, you want to use the Pojo data control to talk to the SQLite database get the collection of data out or in, if you will write back to it, and then um, expose the Pojo data control on the data control panel and then drag and drop the user interface components accordingly to the collections exposed in that model. Or you want to manipulate data as you query the data, kind of a man in the middle approach where I filter data that I query from a SOAP service, or I want to aggregate information. I can do this in the Pojo data control. I could use a Pojo data control for caching. Now that is that I can decide to either temporarily cache in that I keep data I queried from a remote service in the Pojo and for the next subsequent request I will check that data control instance if the data exists and if it does exist I will provide the data from the locally cached uh, storage. If I don't find the data I will just go back to the remote service so I wouldn't lose anything of the functionality by doing that. Or I go for offline support, in which case every data I query from the remote service is what I first put into the SQLite database and then I live out of the SQLite database until I want to synchronize data changes back to the server. When I talked about REST service access uh, for non-XML payloads like JSON, I also said that this is going through a Java adapter that accesses the RESTful service. Now this Java adapter needs to be wrapped in a class that I can expose as a Pojo data control so I can declaratively use the information in it. And then of course I can use a Pojo data control to even provision uh, my application with static data, be it that I downloaded the data or that I just hard-coded the data for something that will never ever change probably in my life, whatever. So these are the options where you can use a Pojo data control and creativity really uh, has a nice place within the Pojo data control. So whatever you need to do uh, have a look at the Pojo and if you can solve it in a Pojo you can expose it as a Pojo data control. Here is a graphical representation of these use cases. So first you see I have a SOAP service and that SOAP service provides data to the Pojo data control. So the Pojo data control is this man in the middle as I tend to refer to this and then the Pojo can decide to either just show the data and deal with the data when the user changes the data on the screen and pass it back to the remote service or just use a SQLite cache for offline storage and the same for reading the information. Similar is what we can build for RESTful service approaches and access. We can save data in a SQLite database, read it there, update it there and then eventually pass it back to the service. So using the Pojo data control as an integration layer, that sounds like a good idea. Usually you will have a bunch of services to deal with, um, being SOAP services, REST services. It's really rare that uh, business applications, enterprise applications work with a single uh, service source. So if you have say 10 services, wouldn't it a good idea to use a Pojo data control to access all of these web services and aggregate the information and expose a single API? Well, on the first side, it looks like a good idea. On the second, however, consideration, it's not a good idea because what does it mean? It means that you're bringing data to the client that typically are not meant to be used on the client. So there's a huge load that you would produce there. 
So mobile clients don't really make good integration layers and that has to do with the bandwidth they use, it has to do with the uh, power they have, the device power. Yeah? Though there's more power in that than NASA had when they flew to the moon, but still the power is not equivalent to what you would have potentially on a server. Um, the data actually that you send, beside of that it's unnecessary data most likely that you use for aggregation, may also be in a shape that it's not suitable for the mobile use. And for best performance, there's a recommendation to keep also the number of data controls low. Now that means if I have 10 services to integrate, I would actually create 11, right? And now with 11 services, I have one more than I really need. So what would be the uh, solution out of that? Now the solution out of this is to aggregate multiple services on the server side. And this is where we do have a product for, which is called Mobile Suite. And you want to have a look into Mobile Suite and see how that could help you to aggregate and transform payloads of different services into one and make that available. So the recommendation is, and I said, keep the number of um, data controls low. It's not that I'm saying keep it to two or three. You can easily go up to above 10 with no problems. However, every data control is instantiated per feature use because every feature is using its own class loader and you can imagine that you create additional loads by using too many data controls there. So if you can aggregate services, if you can integrate services on the server side, that is the approach that you should take. You should not take the Pojo data control. And I only mentioned this in this episode because the Pojo data control sounds like the ultimate silver bullet for integrating services of different natures and kinds. But there are better technologies and better choices available that you can use either on-premise in your own setup or that you can even use on a cloud service environment. That was my little talk about the specifically use of Pojo data controls just to reiterate the most important facts. First of all, a Pojo data control is not a service integration layer. Second, a Pojo data control acts like a man in the middle which proves to be useful for a lot of use cases in uh, including local caching and offline support. Plus, the Pojo data control is capable of doing almost everything that you can think in Java. And for that reason, uh, it's something that you should keep into consideration when architecturing the mobile client side. You can go straight to a service, but if there is a use case that requires you to do some work with the data that you query, have a look at the Pojo data control as a solution.